Now, suppose we've collected a lot of data, like 100 people's, uh, 100 men's weights as part of a nutrition study, a and they range in value from 121 to, you know, a high of 263 uh, for a total span of 142. And these scores might be all over the place, so we might have 100 different weights. A and if we tried to create a frequency table, for each, showing each individual weight and the frequency, we'd probably get a lot of frequencies of 1. In fact, almost all of our values would probably have a frequency of 1. And so what we're going to do is group the data into something called classes, uh, or class intervals. And so this is going to be a range of values, and then we can create a frequency table based on the range of values. Um, and so there's a it, there's a lot of sort of decisions we have to make here, one of which is, is how many, uh, classes we want to have. And usually we want, uh, we want somewhere in the range of 5 to 20 classes, uh, or groupings, uh, depending upon sort of how much data we have or how big the, d uh, the data set is. Uh, and so, so, and then oftentimes it's nice to have, um, the value, the, uh, the ranges sort of start at nice values, though that's not necessary. Uh, and, uh, we, but it is important that each interval be the same size. And so we could say, uh, you know, with our, with our 142 values here, uh, you know, we would have a lot of options. Um, let's consider a couple. So for example, I could have, uh, let's see. So, I mean, like, one option would be if I used 10 classes, uh, sorry, actually, let's do 14 classes, uh, then the width of each one would be around 10. So I could create a class like 100 to 129, uh, and 130 to 139, and I'd end up with 14 classes that way. Um, and so that'd be one option. Uh, I'm, I think I'm gonna go for a slightly different approach here, and I'm gonna make my classes a little wider. Uh, I'm going to use a class width of, uh, 15. So, I'm going to start at 120, even though my data starts at 121, just because it's a nice number. Uh, and so, my first class, my first class interval will be 120 to 134. Uh, my next one will start at the next value up, so 135 up to 149. Uh, just as a, as a point of clarification, if my data included decimals, like, it, you know, if people reported their weights as like 135 and a half, uh, then this class would need to go all the way up to like, you know, 140, 34.99, uh, in order to cover those decimals. Uh, but we're gonna assume for the simplicity for now that, that, uh, that, that's not the case. A and so my classes would, uh, continue developing something uh, some, something like this. So here's the rest of our, our, our class intervals. Uh, and, and then I put in some frequencies. Of course, this would come from the actual data. This would tell us that four students, uh, weights were in the range of 120 to 134, and 14 students' weights were in this interval. Uh, and now that we have this, we can create our, our histogram. Uh, so our histogram here would start at, let's say, 120, uh, and then maybe 135, and 150, and 165, and so on and so forth. Uh, and so our first bar here would start, would have a height of 4, uh, and would start at 120, and go up to, but not include, uh, well, again, not include. So it goes up to 135, because we're going up to 135. My next category would have a height of 14, which I don't think I left enough room here for, so we'll just pretend. 14 and extend out to 150, right? So it's including this entire range of values. Let me show you what this is supposed to look like. This is what that, uh, pre that histogram would end up looking like, and this very nicely shows the distribution of, of weights. Now, some, some software doesn't let you, uh, put the values, in, uh, along the axis like this, and if that's the case, you can create a bar graph where the title of the bar is the range of values, and that does a pretty good job at capturing the same idea.